the Director of Public Health, or, uh, was formerly an NHS appointment, and as of November 2010, he became a joint appointment with the City Council. Uh, without further ado, we can close to the time straight over to Cameron. Thank you very much. Uh, our apologies if I don't turn around to these tables, but I've uh, been given strict instructions to, to talk straight into the, uh, the microphone, so sorry about that. Right, first over here, please. Uh, this uh, statement I've heard many times uh, over the years uh, in terms of what is the future of public health, uh, but this time, this is the heading, the title of an article for the next overhead. Uh, it was actually written by one of my predecessors in a journal, Public Health, uh, by Dr. Johnson Jervis, who was medical officer of health in Leeds. And uh, his article uh, was uh, complaining at the beginning that uh, public health and all the great work that had been going on in public health was going to be moving to this newfangled organisation, the NHS. Uh, well, the uh, answer is for Dr. Jervis is it's, it's coming back home again. Um, but in his article, the next overhead, he uh, ends in a very positive note about uh, needing to build uh, the new public health service. So, what is the new public health service going to be? Next, please. So, the government's ambition is for a new public health system. Within that will be the creation of Public Health England, uh, which will be a new national public health service. And uh, in fact, in the white paper, it describes setting up a new national public health service as a, one of the biggest challenges for a generation, so that it can run in parallel with the national illness service of the NHS. Within this new public health system, as we've already heard, uh, there will be a leadership role for the local authorities, and I want to talk about that a little bit further. And within that, there will be dedicated resources to public health, both nationally and locally, with a much clearer focus on outcomes and evidence-based work. And it is set out in the, uh, the new bill. Next overhead. But the reality is that uh, this new system and service is not just uh, happening on its own. And as Councillor Dobson and uh, John described, it is a very complex system. And uh, just to hopefully uh, summarise some of the early discussions, this is what the architecture is going to look like from 2013. And clearly the sector has got to uh, play its part amongst that. So we've heard about that there will be three stroke four uh, GP consortium leads. There will be a new NHS commissioning board. We are working on a commissioning support unit uh, that will support the consortia. There will be the transfer of public health to the local authority. There will be this new Public Health England. We've been hearing that Leeds will have a health and wellbeing board. There will be Health Watch and there will be foundation trusts and more service provision. So that's what the architecture is going to look like uh, in the future. Now, just to summarise really what Councillor Dobson said and John said, next overhead, what is it all about? Well, to summarise, it is about a redesign of the system, uh, both NHS and public health, and regulation. There is a focus on empowering patients, public communities. You know, there's no doubt there's a, there's a government drive on that, which we mustn't lose sight of, and a much greater focus on outcomes. Next over. And there is an assumption of liberty, <coughs> rather than the previous government of earned autonomy. There are a new series of duties which are set out in the, the bill, and we are going to have to grapple and uh, try and understand those, those new duties. And there are going to be different ways of working expected, including a market approach. Next, please. And all of that is going to have an impact on yourselves in terms of relationships. Uh, the relationships you have with the current providers uh, can be 
commissioners will change. So there's going to be an issue of what are the uh, relationships you are going to have in the future, both for the next couple of years and post-2013. But I can just now go on to a little bit more about the enhanced role of the local authority. Uh, there are going to be duties, the whole series of them, the local authority to take on responsibilities to improving health. They are set out in the, the bill. Uh, there is also a uh, expectation about joint uh, direct public health. Next over, please. So this sets out, I'm sorry if you can't read it, uh, what the proposed role of the direct public health is. And just to go through that, um, I will be jointly appointed by the Clean City Council and Public Health England. So, although I will be uh, employed by the local authority, I'm actually going to have also an accountability through Public Health England to the Secretary of State. And uh, I don't know if this will give you a reassurance, but uh, the Secretary of State is clearly very concerned uh, about me uh, as Director of Public Health. And despite uh, reading and hearing about all the changes that, that are going on, uh, the Secretary of State has uh, made time uh, to make absolutely sure that he can put in the bill uh, how he can sack me uh, post-2013. Um, so uh, it's obviously, uh, I'm obviously so important uh, that, that he must make it absolutely clear how he can get rid of me uh, post-April 1st, 2013. Uh, and that is actually around uh, health protection responsibilities. Um, but the Director of Public Health here in Leeds and elsewhere will be the uh, principal advisor on the health matters to the local authority, uh, to the members and, and officers. And as we've been hearing earlier, we'll continue to lead on the development of the JSNA uh, with others and the new Joint Health and Wellbeing strategy. And uh, I'll continue to have to uh, publish my annual independent report. But on the agreements overhead about the enhanced role, uh, probably of particular importance to yourselves, is going to be about budgets and funding and responsibilities. Next overhead. Now there is a document that is out for consultation, in fact there are two that I'm going to make particular reference to you about. One that is out for consultation till the end of March is on funding and commissioning of public health activities. And there's a second one on outcomes. Now I have just extracted from the funding and commissioning consultation document just one page. Now in that document it sets out a raft of activities that are going to move to a public health budget. And those activities will have a relevance for yourselves. In the consultation document, it sets out the commissioning routes. Now, I've just put here just a few areas. I've just put about mental health, promotion, drug misuse, alcohol, social exclusion. I've just put a few examples. Now, the ones I've put up, the primary commissioning route is down as the local authority. For some of the other areas, it becomes the, the NHS commissioning board. But the important thing here is there are a series of consultation questions and I would really urge you, uh, through your organisations, individually and collectively, to look at those and, uh, and give you back to the Department of Health. Amongst the questions are which services should be mandatory for the local authority to commission. They are clearly expecting that there will be some services that will be in secondary legislation as being mandatory. Again, you might have views on which services you feel should be commissioned uh, in the future on a mandatory basis. Next over here. The, uh, that same document also spells out, and I'll read them out, uh, opportunities for local government to take innovative approaches to public health involving new partners, the Department of Health will work to ensure the voluntary community and social enterprise sector organisations are supported to play a full part in providing health and wellbeing services. Next slide. It goes on to say, as part of building capable and confident communities, areas may wish to consider using grant funding in local communities for preventative 
community focused activities such as volunteering, peer support, befriending, and social networks. And it then goes on to say Palm Health would expect local authority, where possible and appropriate, should be commissioning on any willing provider competitive tender basis. So there clearly is an expectation, uh, as this uh, funding moves to local authority, that it's used in these particular ways. Next slide. Just want to carry on down the, the list. What will happen is that there will be uh, a, a public health uh, fund. It will go to uh, Public Health England. And from that, some funding will come to the local authority. It will be ring-fenced. It's been a contentious issue because, as you will know, uh, many of the budgets coming to local authorities now are no longer uh, ring-fenced. Uh, my personal view is, uh, not to get too hung up on this, uh, my personal view is uh, it probably is an advantage to be ring-fenced for the moment, just so that we can get the show on the road, uh, rather than being uh, scared that it will uh, be, be uh, swiped to, to help uh, local authorities uh, on the <laughs> challenges for the future. There will also be a health premium and this will be uh, dependent on performance, delivery of outcomes. And again, there are questions in the uh, white paper about how that is going to operate in the future, but will clearly be of uh, significant concern for, for the local authority. Now, sadly, uh, the, the arrangements for the commissioning are going to be very complex. Uh, the next over there. You will remember John began his talk uh, with his overhead, uh, which tried to set out in uh, three simple tiers uh, the way the NHS operates. Well, this overhead is sadly uh, just only concentrated on one budget alone, which is the public health ring fence budget. But uh, basically, on the bottom left corner is the Department of Health and the Public Health England. There will be funding there, there will be an allocation to the local authority, which goes upwards, and uh, there will be a, a commission from there. Public Health England, though, will commission some of the services that are already here in Leeds at themselves, and some other services they're going to use the NHS Commissioning Board uh, via the GP Consortium. And I have to just tell you that trying to untangle uh, all the areas that we work on at the moment into where it's going to go, who's accountable for what, is, is a very complicated uh, uh, matter indeed. And uh, there is still huge amounts of uh, work to do. Uh, just to give you a practical example, uh, I was uh, down in London a couple of weeks ago on behalf of uh, Yorkshire and Humber Region as part of a, a, a workshop with uh, uh, various key players to look at health protection issues. And I chaired a uh, table, last table, and we had a scenario actually about TB in schools. And uh, so the scenario, we went through the scenario, and then I said to everybody, right, it's 2013, how are we going to deal with this, uh, this outbreak across these schools? And it raised a raft of issues. So who's accountable for what? Who's accountable to who? Uh, how's it going to be managed and organised? How do you mobilise NHS resources? And, and to be frank, uh, you're going to ask me questions that, that I will not have the answers to, but what is going to be needed is all of these are going to have to be worked out in, in uh, minute detail over the next coming months. Next, please. That's the commissioning part, but there is also outcomes. And there are three outcomes frameworks. Next over here, please. One on public health, one on NHS, NHS, and one on adult social care. Now, I want to go back to Helen's uh, talk at the beginning. And Helen, in her first overhead, uh, had talked about all across, our, all across our sectors, you will find an organisation who already worked to address the five domains. It's first overhead. Well, those domains are the NHS, sorry, no, stay with that. The, are just the NHS framework. Now, from where I'm sitting, I'm going to be interested in not just the delivery of the public health outcomes framework, but 
also I need to ensure that the NHS and our social care can deliver in terms of improving health. So please do not go away from here uh, thinking that your contributions are going to be centred around those NHS outcomes. Uh, I would urge you to look at uh, all three of the outcomes frameworks and really think about the, uh, the contribution, uh, publicise the contribution you made across all three. Now, within the demands, the government is setting out indicators. The NHS outcomes framework has gone through consultation and is now out with its indicators. The public health framework, outcomes framework, is also out of consultation till the end of March. In there, you will see many, many indicators. They're almost thrown in. There will be fewer of them in the final version. I would urge you to look at those indicators and judge for yourselves as organisations, individually and collectively, which ones you feel are the most important. They will get reduced and they're going to be very important in the future because that will be how, in the Health and Wellbeing Board, we are, there will be a, a significant focus for demonstrating improvement. So, uh, clearly having indicators that are of particular relevance to your organisation will aid you in, in the future. Next one, please. Uh, this overhead is trying to convey the part, this is a health overhead, I hate to go back to make it up, but it's just trying to convey to you uh, what the new system is supposed to be like in the future, and you will see it attempts to link in the NHS, public health, social care, it tries to say where the NHS commissioning board fits in, the GP consortia, which I know is the centrepiece for today, where they fit into to the system in terms of service delivery. Because it is an extremely complicated picture at the moment. Uh, the next one, please. I do just want to throw this as a challenge to, to yourselves. Um, because you know, we clearly are entering a very new uh, world here, and uh, since we heard from Helen uh, what, uh, what the sector offers at the moment, but I think uh, you know, it is going to be more and more important with new players on the field, just to, to getting an a individual and collective view of what is the offer that you're making uh, in the new, new world, which is uh, backed by a new government philosophy, uh, which, which I haven't got time to go in for, into today. And finally, I've just put on um, the uh, consultation documents for those that haven't seen them. Um, for all the, uh, the public health doc documents, one of them has a timetable of the uh, 7th of March. Uh, in fact, that's been put back. So they're all end of March. Uh, we are having a series of events across Leeds trying to uh, get people's views on that. But I, I really do urge you to uh, read those documents. Particularly, the one to really go for is the uh, funding and commissioning and the outcomes framework. Uh, the public health white paper, in truth, uh, has a very narrow set of questions. So I personally uh, would focus on the, the outcomes and the funding and commissioning, and I really would urge you to, uh, to, to respond on that, and I'd certainly be delighted to uh, hear uh, any views for yourselves. Uh, and I will leave it there. Thank you.